Hey, hi guys, welcome back. Um, now, I know it's not Thursday, but I have to address this because ever since I posted this video over here, the study on Genesis 1 to 5, now I've had some really creepy characters come and comment that the Elohim, okay, there's Genesis verse 1 1, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim, vayet aharetz, okay, I know that by heart, that the Elohim are the fallen ones who created heaven and earth. All right, the fallen ones. Now, I can't even begin to tell you how, how wrong that is, okay? And they said this, some of them genuinely believe this, that the Elohim are the fallen angels, all right? They think this because this guy Clek on YouTube uses a very, very basic software called eSword and can read a few Hebrew meanings in English Hebrew, you know, English Hebrew. And now he thinks he's some sort of a Hebrew scholar. Wow. Okay, no, that's not how it works. Okay, let me show you. Now, I have studied Hebrew with rabbinical scholars for five long years, and I have never boasted about it before. But, but, when these people presume to come and teach me Hebrew, you know, it's just laughable because I'll tell you, if I give them one sentence in Hebrew, all right, just one sentence, all right, I bet they or their teacher clerk won't be able to make head or tail of it without access to Google. Okay, they'll be scrambling around trying to figure out what it means. Hebrew is a language of nuances that you can't learn from Esword. Okay, you need to learn from rabbinical Hebrew scholars who teach Hebrew. Now, they want to show me Esau and teach me from Esau. Well, fine. Let me show them the truth, okay? The truth about who Elohim are using their own basic Esau to decimate and annihilate the ridiculous idea that Elohim are fallen angels. Okay, it's a completely nonsensical thing that they've learned from a teacher who reads out of Esword. Okay, let's go to Esword. I'll use Esword to decimate this. All right, let's just go there. All right, we're here in Esword. Let's go to Genesis 1 1. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right, all right, now this word God is Elohim. All right, now let me just tell you Elohim is H430, as you can make out from here. Okay. And the reason these guys, uh, this Kleck fellow is saying this is because he says that this, uh, you know, it says that occasionally applied to magistrates, sometimes even angels, etc. And he says these are the fallen angels. Okay. All right. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. So what does this, what is this uh, verse, Genesis 1-1? I'll tell you. It's Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim. Va'et ha'aretz. Okay, so this is heaven is shamayim. Okay, and earth is aretz. All right, so far so good. Okay, let's go to Genesis two, and let's see Genesis two four. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, shamayim, aretz. Okay, and who made it? The Lord Yod He Vav He, Elohim. The Lord God is Yod He Vav He. Elohim. So then this in itself, in Esau itself, just completely decimates the fact that they are going around telling people that Elohim are the fallen angels. All right. It's ridiculous. You know who the Elohim are? They are yod He vav He, the Tetragrammaton. Some people call him Jehovah. Some people say Yahweh. Actually, his name is spelled and pronounced in a different way. It's yod He vav He. It's the Tetragrammaton. Okay. And he is the supreme creator, all right, the creator of heaven and earth. All right, so here in Genesis 2 4, can you see clearly? This says what? Who created the heaven and the earth? Yod He Vav He, okay? Yod He Vav He Elohim, wherever you see Lord God, Lord in capital, it's Yod He Vav He, and this God is Elohim. So the Lord God, that's Yod He Vav He, and his team is basically Elohim, all right? <laughs> This is from Esau itself. So, these people who are saying the Elohim of fallen angels are, I don't know what to say to them, okay? 
you're using Esau to teach me Hebrew. Go to Esau, go to 2.4, okay, Genesis 2.4 and see who created the Shamaim Varets, all right, the heaven and the earth, okay. And that's not all. <laughs> Let me show you something else. Okay, now here's a slide that I've prepared, all right. What does it say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, okay. This is Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Who created the heaven and the earth? Elohim. That's H430 I showed you in Esau. Who are the Elohim? Genesis 2.4 answers that. It's Yod He Vav He and his team. Where do we have proof of this? Well, in Genesis 2.4, as I just showed you, and in Job 38, 1, 4, and 7, verses 1, 4, and 7. Okay. Also, we have the proof of this in Nehemiah 9.6. Psalms 19.1, Psalms 33.6, and the biggest proof is in Isaiah 37.16, okay? Now, wait. So, Genesis 1.1 1, 1 says, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim vayet haretz, and Genesis 2.4 says, Be'yam masot yod he vav he Elohim eretz vashamayim. This is basically on the day, Be'yam, Yom is on the day, okay? Asot made he, okay? Who? Yod he vav he Elohim, the Lord God, eretz vashamayim earth and heavens okay so that's genesis 2 4 this is genesis 1 1 okay now let me just read out the other things also to you okay uh, in the sense that um i don't want to leave you hanging so i'm just going to read this out to you all right so here we go let's go to nehemiah 9 6 okay it says thou even thou art lord now you can see this in um, esod lord is your hey Vavhe, okay, Yodhe Vavhe. That is the father, all right. Now, even thou art Lord alone, thou hast made heaven, okay, Shamaim, the heaven of heavens, Shama Shamaim, with all their hosts, that is the host, okay, the armies of heaven and the earth and all things that are therein. The seas, I discussed the seas, okay, in my previous uh, study, and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. This is the Elohim. Elohim is what? Who are the Elohim? Elohim is your Hevavi and his team. Okay? That's who the Elohim are. Alright? I mean, look at Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God. This is El. Okay? And the firmament showeth his handiwork. El, the most high. Or your Hevavi. Another word for your Hevavi is El. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Alright? Psalms 33, 6, by the word of the Lord, again, this capitalized Lord is always yod he vav he where the, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth, okay, that's in Genesis 2. Isaiah 37, 16, this leaves no room for doubt, okay, O Lord of hosts, that is yod he vav he of hosts, the armies of heaven, God of Israel, that dwellest between the cherubims. Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. This leaves no room for doubt. Who created heaven and earth? Thou hast made heaven and earth. I repeat, thou hast made heaven, Shamaim, and Aretz. Okay, what does Genesis 1 1 says? Bereshit para Elohim et ha Shamaim va ha Aretz. Shamaim is heavens, Aretz is earth. What does Genesis 2 4 says? Beyond on the day made Asoth, okay, on the day that you made, who? Yodhe Vavhe Elohim Eretz Vashamayim. So if you're saying fallen angels, I'm addressing this to Klek and his clan, if fallen angels are Elohim and they made the heavens and the earth, then how is it that Genesis 2 4 says that uh, Yodhe Vavhe Elohim made the heavens and the earth? It is the same heaven and the earth, okay? Haaretz, okay? Hashamayim wa haaretz. That is basically Eretz and Shamayim, earth and heavens, okay? So this itself totally decimates and annihilates the ridiculous idea that Elohim are fallen angels, okay? This is beyond ridiculous. I had to address this because this is just beyond ridiculous, okay? Let's go to Job next, okay? If you need more confirmation, let's go to Job, all right? Okay, so here we are in Job chapter 38, verse 1. And the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, hmm? So this Lord, okay, 
is Yodhe Vabhe. Now, there's no um, confusion in anyone's mind, right, that Yodhe Vabhe isn't the creator, the father god, okay? Uh, some Christians call him Jehovah, which is not the right way to say it, but it's it can be Yahweh or Yodhe Vabhe, okay? And the Jewish people don't like to pronounce it because the pronunciation is not Yahweh, it's something else. And I'm not going to share that here because a lot of people take his name in vain. So, Yodhe Vabhe answered Job, all right? What did he say in verse 4? Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? So who laid the foundations of the earth? Yodhe Vavhe Elohim. Yeah, as it says in Genesis 1-1, the Elohim. Okay. Bereshit bara Elohim. Yeah. Vaha Shamaim. Vaha Ritz. Yeah. Alright. Now, it may seem to you that I'm mocking these people, but there's a reason for it. Okay. This mockery is required because... It angers, it angers me, it's a anger, you know, it's a anger come from righteousness. That how can you ascribe the works of the God to darkness? Do you know what Jesus has to say about that in Matthew 12? Read Matthew 12, 31 and 32, you'll know. Ah, so, it's the Lord God, okay, who tells Job that he laid the foundations of the earth, Eretz, okay, again Eretz, the same word used in Genesis 1-1, all right? So which is it? Hmm? And he also in verse 7 he says, When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God, Elohim, shouted for joy. Okay, this word here is again Elohim. So you're saying God is in cahoots with the fallen angels? Hmm? What are you trying to say? You people have written to me and given me big explanations on how Elohim are the fallen angels. Explain Job 38.7 to me. Okay, that the sons of God shouted for joy. Explain Job 38, 1, 38, 4, and 38, 7 to me. Explain Isaiah 37, 16 to me. Hmm? Why don't you do that? Since you're such Hebrew scholars. <laughs> so what is the Lord God? Hmm? What does it say here in Genesis 2, 4? That's the reason I'm mocking you guys because you all don't know the first thing about Hebrew. The only thing you've read is it. E sword, all right, and you think that makes you Hebrew scholars? You're trying to teach me Hebrew, hmm? Lord God, God He Vav He Elohim. Okay, like any major leader of this, any important person in this world, in this world, okay, whether it's a president or a CEO of a multinational, they all have teams working with them. Do you think? Yodhe Vavhe? Do you think the creator of all doesn't have a massive team working with him? Tell me. So the president of a country decides to build a hospital. Do you think the president is going and putting bricks and mortar and building the hospital? Or does he have a team doing all this for him? The architectural plans, the actual building work. There are civil contractors doing this. There are engineers involved. Hmm? Do you think Yodhe Vavhe doesn't have a bigger team than all these people? These CEOs and presidents and all that? Hmm? And who are, who are his team? It's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they have a host of heaven. Talk about seraphims, cherubims, archangels, angels, thousands upon ten thousands upon ten thousands of them. Hmm? And you presume to come and tell me that Elohim are the fallen ones. And they created heaven and earth. So then how do you explain Genesis 2-4? Hmm? Using your own Esau, who made the earth and the heavens? The Lord God, Yod He Vav He, Elohim made the earth and the heavens. So, my dear friends, the other thing is Salem, right? The other thing these people talk about, the image. Okay, I have an interesting way to explain it. Alright, so image, here we go, okay? So, God created, Elohim created man in his own image. Now this word Salem, they throw around because they've learned it from Esau. Okay, they don't know what it means. They just learned it from Esau. All right, let me move this up. Okay, so Salem basically means a resemblance, hence a representative figure. Okay, especially in idol, it says image, vain shoe. Okay, now what is this resemblance? Okay, I'm going to use this potato. Okay, now this is a potato. If I want to make a salem of it, what do I do? I make one out of clay. Alright, I make a, I make something out of clay. Let me see. 
and I draw eyes and I draw mouth okay and let's say I've made this out of clay all right so here we have a potato and I want to make a salem of a potato okay so I make this stick a pole into it and here this becomes the salem all right that is what it means to say idle because it's a resemblance to this it's a resemblance it's not this but it's a resemblance to this do you get it now mr potato head over here is a salem of the real thing because it carries a resemblance to the real thing all right so i'm putting potato head away please don't learn from potato heads you're in danger of being doomed okay the lord god takes a huge uh what can i say it's it's a huge it's the unforgivable sin when you ascribe the works of god to darkness okay when jesus was healing people in matthew 12 okay you know what the pharisee said they said they told him that you're healing them by the power of Beelzebub. And Jesus told them, don't ascribe the works of God to darkness. That's an unforgivable sin. Read 12.31, Matthew 12.31. Resemblance, okay? So God created man in his own image, in his resemblance, all right? And Selem actually means your essence, okay? God created man in his essence, in his resemblance. All right, this does not mean potato head. Okay, it does not, it's not the same thing. It can be referred to as this, or it can mean the sense, the resemblance. All right, there are many different meanings. Esau only puts these few meanings, but there are a lot of meanings to this word Salem. All right, and it has 17 occurrences. Image, Salem. Okay, so. I mean, don't go by people who read Esau and teach you. They're not Hebrew scholars. Trust me, I used to I used to learn Hebrew from Esau long, long back. Okay. Once I started learning from the rabbinical Hebrew scholars, there was so much, there's so many nuances to Hebrew you won't believe, right? And as I told you, I've studied Hebrew with rabbinical scholars now for five long years. And these people are presuming to come and teach me Hebrew because they they can read English Hebrew meanings in Esau. Please give me a break, okay? So who created heavens and earth? Who created the heavens and the earth? God, Elohim. Who is Elohim? Let's go back to that slide. All right, here it is. So who created the heaven and the earth? Elohim. Hmm? And what does it say in Genesis 2 4? Meom, this day, okay, Asoth made he, alright, Piyom Asoth Yadhe Vavhe Elohim Eretz Vashamayim. And what does it say in Isaiah? Let's go there also. Let me just increase this. O Lord of hosts, Yadhe Vavhe, God of Israel that dwelleth between the cherubims. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Hmm? So when you come and tell me that this Bereshit para Elohim, this Elohim is a fallen angel or fallen angels who created the earth and the heavens, you better know what you're talking about, right? Because that's not how it is. Who are the Elohim? Elohim are yod he vav he and his team, which is mentioned in Job. Okay, go to Job 38 and see verse 7. Where Yod He Vav He says that He and the sons of God, Veneo Elohim, He and His sons shouted for joy when the earth was created. All right. So please don't come to my channel and presume to teach me Hebrew. Don't do it. Okay. Because showing you on this basic E sword, okay, basic E sword I showed you, right? And what does it say in Genesis 2 4? Who created the heavens and the earth? Hmm? Yod he ah, yod he vav he Elohim. Oh, anyway, I'm going to come back with a bigger study on from Genesis six and seven. All right, that'll be on Thursday. Usual studies with uh, Pearl on Thursday, right? 
So all I want to say is I'm referring to Clack and his clan, okay, Ku Klux Klan, clan. All right, how dare they ascribe the work of God, Yod Heva, Yod Heva, all right, to the fallen ones? How dare they? How dare they? How dare they attribute the works of God? Your hey, wow, hey to darkness. I've just blocked all those comments and those commenters because they have no clue what they're talking about. They have no idea about Hebrew. And they presume to come and teach me Hebrew, right? Because they, they can read some English Hebrew words on Esau. Wow. Okay, so please don't go to such teachers. Avoid the potato heads. Please avoid the potato head teachers who have just were just teaching using Esword and they have no clue. Like as I told you, if I give them one sentence in Hebrew, they'll be scrambling to Google trying to figure out what it means. Do you know that? So don't come and try and teach me Hebrew. All right, please don't do that. Don't presume and assume. And do not ever say again, all of you who have made the mistake of commenting on this channel, that the Elohim are the fallen ones. Don't you dare ever ascribe the works of God your hey, wow, hey, to darkness ever again. Do you understand? Right. I'm sorry this is anger, but it's an anger from righteousness. All right. Never ascribe the works of God to darkness. Never. Well, anyway, God bless you, the rest of you.